Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a look at the new update for Topaz Photo AI 2. This is version 2.0.2. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Let's take a look at uh, the latest update for Topaz Photo AI, version 2.0.2. Now, if I come up here to help and we come down to release notes, we can click on that. That'll open up your file browser and we can take a look here at what's new. So we can click on Topaz Photo AI 2.0.2 and we can get a look here. I'm going to scroll up to the top and let's see what's new in this new update. Okay, it says this week we have a massive change in the way raw files are previewed and exported in the app. All previews and exports will now utilize Adobe DNG SDK by default. This should make your colors more accurate for a lot of cameras and gives us a good base for making further improvements. And then if we scroll down, we can see changes since 2.0.1. You could pause the video here and see the different changes that have taken place. But today what I'm going to do is export a raw file into Topaz Photo AI. And we'll go ahead and process it and then we'll send that result back into Lightroom and we'll compare the original raw file with a new Adobe DNG STK file that comes back. We'll see if those colors remain consistent between the two files, but we're going to check that out in a minute. Now, I also want to point out they're saying there are some cameras that are either not improved yet or may look different, but they're working on supporting those soon. Since this is a massive change, we would appreciate feedback on any raw files that are negatively impacted by this change. So let Topaz know if you're having any issues. In case you're wondering what an Adobe DNG STK file is, Adobe provides a software development kit SDK for developers to work with DNG files. This SDK includes tools and libraries that allow developers to read, write, and process DNG files programmatically. It can be used to integrate DNG support into software applications or workflows. So that is what a DNG SDK file is. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and send this image over to Topaz Photo AI to let it uh, process this thing, remove noise, sharpen it, whatever it needs. And by the way, this image is an ISO 3200. I have no processing on it right now, no noise reduction. So if I zoom in, you can see there's a lot of noise in here. And it's a little bit soft. It's not too bad, but we'll see what uh, Photo AI can do with it. By the way, if you don't yet own Topaz Photo AI, or if you want to renew your license, you can go ahead and click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. When you do that, I make a small commission and this helps me to keep my tutorials coming your way. I really appreciate that. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. This helps support the joy of editing also. And please leave comments and questions. I really love to hear from you. Now to send this raw file into Topaz Photo AI, what you want to do is come up. Now I'm working on a Mac. I'm pretty sure it's very similar on Windows, but come up here to file and come down and find plug in extras. And mine's right down at the bottom of the list. I'm sure yours will be at the bottom of the list as well. Click on process with Topaz Photo AI. So I'm going to edit a copy and that'll send this image into Topaz Photo AI. And you can see autopilot is running on the image right now. And as soon as that's done, we'll get a look at it here, but I'll leave this in real time. Okay. And it is almost there. And then you can see over here, see this little circle spinning around it's doing its little thing and now it is done now right now i'm zoomed into 100 percent, but this is uh you could click right here and you could go to different zoom values here and also i'm using the split screen view here so i can take this slider and drag it across or this bar and drag it across and you can see like the before is on the left the after is on the right and let me go ahead and zoom in to say like 200 percent now well, it's already processed right there, but we can see, but if you look right up in here, all that noise in there, you can see it's been removed. So that's pretty cool. And if we look like right here, we can see how sharp it is right now. Now, right now, the only thing that Topaz Photo AI has used is remove noise. And if I hover right here, 
you can see in the middle there, it says autopilot detected severe noise in this image. Now it hasn't used any sharpening because if I hover right here, it says autopilot detected low blur in this image. So there's not much blur, but if we open this up by clicking here, we can see that it is using the raw normal version two model. Okay. And this is the strength that's chosen. Now I can drag this up to the right if I want more noise reduction, but I think it's done a really good job. And, but here's the thing. If you want to get extra sharpening here, what we need to do is adjust minor de-blur. There's really no need to go to sharpen here to the sharpen module. Now this is if there was extreme sharpening problems, then we would probably need to go there, but we could take care of the sharpening right here. So I'm going to take this slider and let's drag it to the right and I'll leave this in real time. And you can see here it's removing noise and then it's initializing and then it's removing noise a second time. And now it's sharpening and now we can see. So let me drag this to the right, but you can see right now it's much sharper. So then all you really need to do is work with this slider right here. In fact, I may just pull it back just a little bit more and let it go ahead and update again. And it's almost there and now it's done. So I think that looks really good. Now up here in the, let's call it the navigator window, you, window, you can move this around to different areas of the image. And then I can drag this across and you can see there is the noise over here. Now this was shot at F8. It's a 70 millimeter lens. So I don't expect these areas to be sharp because I focused on this right here. What is this? A gourd in this area right near that's the focus point, but you can see that noise is removed. That looks really good. Then when I come back over in here, We'll just have to let it process again. There it is again. So now we can see. So we can see how nice and sharp this is right here. But that's the area of focus right in here. But I think we're good. Now we have different ways of viewing. We could come down here to the bottom right hand side and click on this button right here. This will give us a single view. And let me go ahead and in this case, let's go ahead and fit this to screen. Okay, and it has to go ahead and process itself again right there. And it does a pretty quick job there. So now we can see it at uh, full size. Now, if you zoom in, the processing will be much quicker than if you have it fit the screen, by the way. That's a little tip. And of course, we have the split screen where we can drag this across and see the before and after. And of course, we could do a side by side view, which can be nice too to compare the two. So the image on the left is before processing, the image on the right is after processing. And you can clearly see this is a little bit sharper and it looks really good. I'm going to go back to the single view. And now what we need to do is send this back into Lightroom. Then we can make our comparison and see how true the color is to the original RAW file. Now, my workflow has been to not process my RAW files in Photo AI because I was not happy with the color shifting I was getting. So I'm hoping this will do a better job because I'd much rather do the noise reduction and sharpening on the raw file versus, you know, after the fact. I would always do my Lightroom adjustments first, send the image as a TIFF file into Photoshop, and then I would run Photo AI on it. And I got good results, but I'm hoping that now I can do the processing in Photo AI on the raw file. But let's see if that's going to change. So let's go ahead and send this image back into Lightroom. But before I do that, I almost forgot to tell you, let's come up here to Topaz Photo AI in the menu. Click right here. Click on Preferences. Under General, if you don't want to use Adobe DNG SDK for export, you can shut this off by clicking right here. You'll shut that off and then you'll click Save. I'm going to leave mine on. But say, for instance, you tried it and you didn't like the results, you can go back to the old way by shutting this off. Now, you can click cancel here if you're not going to change anything, or you can click outside of the dialog box. Okay, then now I'm going to send this back to Lightroom. So just come to the bottom right hand side of the interface and click right here, save to Adobe Lightroom Classic. Click on that. That'll send us back. I'll leave this in real time so we can see how long this is going to take. And we are back. Okay, now let's check it out. Right now you're seeing the process version from Photo AI. So take a look at that. And now I'll click on the original RAW file. So there's the original. And here is Topaz Photo AI. I'll tell you what, I think it looks really good. Let me go ahead and go back to library. And by the way, there's no processing on either one of these. Let's go back to library. And what I'll do is 
I'm going to command or control click on the original raw file. And then I'm going to click on this button right here. I'll use the shortcut of shift tab so we can really see the two images side by side up close and personal. I'm going to go ahead and type my L key twice so I can shut the lights out. So the image on the left is the Topaz Photo AI version. The image on the right is the original raw file. So I just want you to look at the colors so you can really examine them. And I'll tell you what, they are so very close to being identical. So I'll tell you what, this DNG SDK file is really a great improvement. And let me know what kind of results you're getting in the comments section below. So give this a try. I went ahead and zoomed into 200%. So right now what you're seeing is the Topaz Photo AI with noise reduction and some sharpening on it compared to now you're gonna see this is the raw file. So you can see the noise up in here and how it is definitely softer. But again, here is the Topaz Photo AI file, much sharper. And so there you have it, everyone. This is the new Topaz Photo AI update version 2.0.2, .2, now using DNG SDK files for raw processing. Well, there it is, everyone, Topaz Photo AI 2, the new update version 2.0.2, .2, now using DNG SDK files for raw processing. I think I'll start processing my raw files in Topaz Photo AI now. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon and then click all notifications so you receive all notifications. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.